If you find that after hours of working on a 3D scene, adjusting the materials, lighting and animation, that when you hit render it still feels flat and unappealing, and you'd love to add real life footage to your 3D scenes, or 3D objects to your real life footage, you may have overlooked one of Blender's most powerful and underrated tools, the Compositor. It also allows us to combine CGI and real footage, improve and adjust the look of a scene, create effects that would be hard to achieve in 3D, and provides a huge amount of flexibility to the production of art and film. My name is Daniel Nees, and I have been working in high-end film production for the better part of a decade. Today I'm proud to announce my new Master Compositing in Blender course, in which I'll be showing you how to harness compositing techniques I've learned in my career for your own work. The techniques taught here are not just for a specific scene, but for any image, animation or piece of footage. And when you're done, you'll be able to greatly enhance everything you make in just a few minutes. But how will this be achieved specifically? Let's dive in. We'll start by acquiring the tools that we need, in particular, the free software called Blender. There are a few other useful tools, but Blender is the only one actually required to complete the course. We'll then begin our compositing journey by learning about the wide array of nodes available in Blender's compositor, and how they can be used to achieve effects such as blur, vignette, color grading, lens distortion, glow, film grain, and more. We'll also discuss how to use mix, math, mask, and alpha over nodes to layer images together in a variety of interesting ways. Once we have a good understanding of how all that works, we'll apply these nodes in a more practical example to assemble and improve this hangar scene from the provided 3D renders. At this point, you'll be able to apply some compositing tricks to your own work, not just the scenes in this course. We are far from done though, and now we'll take our first look at an animated shot. This one is quite interesting because we'll be using just a few still images and one stock explosion and building them into an epic, large-scale animated shot of a city being invaded by a fleet of spaceships. The techniques employed here are great for creating large, animated, establishing shots from simple 2D images, and I've used them many times to add some extra depth to shots that seem a bit flat and dull in a short amount of time. We'll be doing all the animation from scratch, taking our first look at some interesting effects like camera shake, light wrap, and lens flares, and learning to use node groups in a few powerful ways. From here we'll start looking into some more advanced render passes that are commonly used in compositing, such as light groups, cryptomats, and depth passes. Passes like these allow us to do a wide variety of useful things, such as altering individual lights after the render is complete, creating automatic masks of animated 3D objects for color grading, creating atmospheric haze, or adding to focus to a scene. We'll also go through how to separate scenes into layers in such a way that we can set different render settings and even different render engines for each layer. We'll put this new knowledge into action by creating another shot, this time a full 3D animated scene of a sci-fi fighter taking off from its hangar bay. This will involve using light groups to both adjust and animate the lighting of the scene, using masks to grade individual objects, create some interesting glow effects using stock elements, and building effects such as heat haze and a more dynamic camera shake. Once we're done with that, we'll take a look at some other render pass types, such as normal, position, and material passes, providing further flexibility to our workflow, and with the use of shadow catches, we'll start to dip our toes into using real footage for the first time. Diving into real footage even more, we'll now spend a whole chapter going through how to track footage. This will include simple 2D tracks that just follow movement and rotation, plain tracks that allow us to add the perspective shift of a surface, and even full 3D camera tracks which let us add whole 3D objects to our footage. We'll even discuss how you can use a 3D track of real footage to add realistic camera animation to a completely 3D scene. Rounding out the section, we'll use all of this knowledge we've built up so far to create this scene of a damaged fighter landing in a car park at night. This will involve grading of our footage, which was filmed during the day, to make it look like it was filmed at night, adding our CG objects and elements to the footage, and then using a variety of techniques to integrate CG lighting into the scene to really sell the nighttime effect. That is what will be available at launch. However, in a later update, we'll have a few extra things to look at, starting with a whole chapter dedicated to keying techniques, commonly known as green or blue screening, and masking or rotoscoping, followed by another scene where we put a real actor into a 3D environment. We'll also go through the process of building some custom compositing tools, such as a more flexible glow, procedural vignette, anamorphic smear, and some custom color grading tools. All of this is designed to provide you with the tools and techniques necessary to make massive improvements to your work with very little time and effort. These are techniques that are common across almost all compositing software, including industry standard software such as Nuke, DaVinci Resolve, and After Effects, so while this course is focused on Blender and how Blender achieves these results, this knowledge is applicable no matter what software you end up using. 
That should give you a good idea of what to expect from the course, and I hope you're as excited as I am to get started. Compositing is such a useful set of skills, and I look forward to showing it to you.